So I love combining my passions and interests with bicycles. And if you follow us on Instagram, then you know that I've recently picked up uh, watercolors. In this video, I'm gonna share with you guys my traveling watercolor kit that I hope to take on bike adventures this summer. Welcome back, Pathless Peddlers. And if you're new to the channel, if you're into things like gravel bikes, rando bikes, and watercolors, basically the supple life you have found your people, consider subscribing. So if you're like me, you can't help but bring different things with you on bike tours to keep yourself entertained. Clearly fishing, coffee, photography videos. And this summer I hope to do more painting. I know that's one reason I will never be an ultralight bike packer. I've always been interested in watercolors, but it's the, the interest has finally stuck this time and I've committed, bought some supplies and have been teaching myself how to do it. So let's switch to the talking hand view. All right, so let's see what I have in my traveling art bag. I think at the heart of a watercolor kit, of course, are some watercolors. And this is what I like to use currently, uh, wood some modification. So this is a, a Koi pocket sketcher, travel sketcher kit and it's super cute. So you have, uh, it comes with 12 colors. A couple of them I have swapped out. I'll get into that. Uh, it comes with a sponge and a small uh, water brush, which I removed. And it's got several options for uh, mixing colors, which is always nice and amazing in such a compact kit. So I've only had this for two weeks and you can see it's well used. I've actually already swapped some colors out. So it came with a uh, white and a black, which I removed and I subbed in with a Payne's, uh, Payne's Gray and a Sepia. It also came with an orange, which I also removed and swapped in with a Gumbosh Red. And the reason for that is uh, I can create an orange by mixing these two reds with these two yellow ish colors. And I may eventually swap out these two greens since I can make a variety of greens by mixing in these two blues with these two yellow colors. So this is a watercolor kit and it's pretty affordable. I think I bought this for $20. I recently picked up this one. This is a Winsor Newton Cotman. Uh, again, one of their travel series, uh, 12 colors. I did the same thing. I took out the black and the white, put in Payne's gray and sepia and swapped out. Um, an orange for a brighter red. This doesn't have as many mixing areas, but it is a nice smaller size. And I will say between the two of these, the Cotman and the Koi, uh, I actually like the vibrancy of the colors in the Koi, even though this seems more of like the, the less professional set, if you will. What I do like about the Cotman, um, I, you know, I'll use this until it's gone. It does come with these little pan trays that you can remove and put in your own colors. So uh, I may pop these colors out eventually and just put in uh, two paints that I like to use. And this is super cheap. I got this uh, at a store in Idaho for 15 bucks. Next thing you'll need are some brushes and these are the two I use uh, the most. So if I'm traveling, I'll use this Koi water brush. Um, it's got synthetic um, fibers here and a little water reservoir and you can squeeze in water to apply it to the paint and clear out the brush. I knew I wanted to get pretty serious about watercolors this time, so I invested in this travel brush by Da Vinci. And what's cool about this is it's super small, and what sets this apart is that it uses Kalinske hair in the brush, so it's really springy. Uh, it can make both broad washes as well as fine points and that's just because it has really nice hairs. It doesn't have its own water reservoir, so you do have to travel with uh, some, some kind of water carrying device, but at home and on certain occasions when I'm traveling, I'm gonna use this one. Um, awesome brush. Next thing are the drawing implements, and I have them stored in this uh, toothbrush case, travel toothbrush case. And basically I have a white gel pen, and then I use a pencil. This is a, a Faber, Faber Castell. Uh, pencil. I got some little pencil protector points here. And this is an H. Uh, so pencils come in different grades, grades of hardness. Uh, the B's tend to be too soft and dull really quickly. Uh, they're buttery to write with, but not great for creating like really light construction lines. So I like pencils in the H hardness range. And of course, you've got to sharpen uh, that pencil. And this is just a uh, black wing pencil sharpener. It's got two holes in there. One is to establish the length of the pencil and the other is to sharpen the actual point. And for drawing, I use uh, the, the Pigma Micron 01s. These are actually the same size. I tend to go through a lot of these, so I'm carrying two. Other than that, uh, 
an eraser, and I do have a collection of two paints that I'll use to fill up the wells as they run out. So the colors that I've really enjoyed the most that weren't with any of these uh, kits was uh, sepia and Payne's gray. So let's talk notebooks and paper. So I like this really small one. It's uh, by Pentalic, and they come in different sizes. This, this uses the same paper. They actually have a, a square one for your Instagram shaped uh, paintings. And uh, the paper is pretty good. You know, I use this one primarily for practice or to do little studies. And what I like about smaller size pages is that um, it's less intimidating. You don't have to cover these big swaths, and you can and you can create really nice looking uh, pieces of artwork in not too much time. So as you can see, I've just been practicing, uh, you know, blending colors, playing with the colors I have, seeing how they mix on on the paper itself. Uh, some of you guys, if you follow me on Instagram, might have seen this. These were some uh, Instagram-inspired photos. This is uh, Benedict, Ultra Romance, of course. This is Pepper from uh, Book Bike Brew. She was in that latest film by by uh, Jay Ritchie. Uh, some other studies, just trying to figure out brush technique, um, how to paint trees. And this is my recent one that I posted this morning. It's actually based on a cover of Adventure Cycling, and this is the late uh, Mike Hall, uh, Endurance Bike Packer. So I love the paper in this one. Uh, the usable area is fairly small, so there's that, but it's great for quick uh, you know, sketches and studies. This is, uh, again, a, the same one, slightly larger in size, but great for um, you know, slightly larger compositions. Here I was playing with different techniques, blending colors on the page. And you can also split this up into smaller uh, little studies if you want, if, if the whole page is too intimidating. So here you can see I've been playing with different techniques before I commit to a larger piece. Again, small little studies. I'll use the areas around it to blend the colors and see how they'll look like in the, in the final piece. Here's a little uh, watercolor I did of a photograph I took through Ortlieb um, that you guys might have seen on Instagram. So again, really small pieces, but you can practice a lot of techniques on, on the small space. So I was recently in Idaho and spent some time, I had some free time, so I drew the Capitol and painted it on the spot, which was pretty cool to do. <clears throat> While I was at the Capitol in Boise, uh, Idaho, they had a life mask of Lincoln, which I became obsessed about. So I drew it a couple times, finally got a drawing I liked, and then kind of played with uh, shading the face in. Okay, and lastly, there is this style of paper, which is not a notebook, because you don't actually flip through the pages, but it's known as a block. So all the paper is bound together with these gummy edges. And the advantage of this is that everything lays perfectly flat, and then when you're done, you can peel it off. So this is a couple of recent examples. Um, this is the Clark Fork River here in Missoula, and the water is really high. Usually I'm fishing around here, but as you can see, the water is blown, so that's why I'm doing watercolors. One from a, a creek behind the house, and it's, uh, you might be wondering why this part is empty. I actually drew it on the creek, so I was holding it like this and filling in the space here and using this part uh, just, to, just to hold it. The last notebook that I got recently, which I really enjoy is by the brand Strathmore. This is their visual journal. I actually have one page pinned in here. And I was just testing out the paper and it works really well. It blends the colors nicely on the page and it lays flat. So this is a notebook I'm going to be using for our drawing to drawing Kanza uh, project. I mean, that's really it. You can make watercoloring on bike as uh, simple or as complicated as you'd like. Um, I think the most simplest version would be a kit like this, a water brush, and, um, and a small notebook, and maybe a, a pencil or, or a pen or two. And that's about it. So that's it for this video. I hope you guys enjoyed it. I know it's completely different from other types of content, but it's, I, I just like to share my interest with you guys. I know some of you might be into it as well. So if you guys have any questions about watercolors, what I use specifically, leave those in the comments below. All the links to these products will be in the description. And until next time, keep the supple side down.